نصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم اني اسالك علما نافعا رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Suratul Baqarah verse 87 Wa laqad atayna Musa al-kitaba wa qaffayna min ba'dihi bir-rusul and we did certainly give Musa alayhi salam the Torah and followed up after him with messengers wa atayna ജമലിയമൽ <laughs> ഫസുക്കുസ്തൂട്ട് In this verse 87 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning two blessings on two prophets and their followers and in response and despite of being blessed by these two blessings two behaviors or mannerisms of the followers of these two prophets that is the people of bani israel and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the two main reasons for these behaviors also the two blessings mentioned for hazrat musa alayhi salam are number 1 wa laqad atayna musa al-kitaba that we did certainly give musa alayhi salam the torah as if musa alayhi salam was blessed with the revelations of the divine scripture of torah which is also known as the old testament and the old testament according to the various sects of the jews have uh, different jews or different parts uh, from 30 to 34 parts and it is also known as the old testament the second thing which he was blessed was what Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here wa qaffayna bin ba'dihi bir rusul that he was followed after after him with a series of prophets that is the family tree of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala qaffayna means consecutively continuously one after the other a series or a chain of prophets and we all know that out of all the prophets mentioned in quran after hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam other than hazrat ismail alayhi salam and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam rest of all the prophets mentioned after hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam in quran they were sent to the people of bani israel and similarly out of all the holy scriptures mentioned in the quran other than the holy quran revealed to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rest of all the holy books and holy uh, scriptures mentioned in quran they were revealed and sent towards the people of bani israel so these were the sources of divine guidance 
and they were the best blessings which were mentioned here for the people of Bani Israel and for the followers of Hazrat Musa Al Islam. Hazrat, uh, Hazrat uh, Isa Al Islam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions here, wa atayna Isa bin Maryam al Bakinat, that the first blessing was that he was blessed with Bayinat. What do we mean by Bayinat? It means clear cut proofs, clear and vivid indications or solid, clear logic. So Hazrat Isa Alayhi Salam was blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with these, with these clear proofs and they were what? They were basically the miracles which were blessed by the order of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to Hazrat Isa Alayhi Salam. Now the miracles which were given to Hazrat Isa Alayhi Salam, they have been mentioned in more than one uh, praises and more than one ayah of the Quran. And these uh, miracles of Hazrat Musa are, number one is his, is his birth itself. His birth itself was a miracle. We know that all the prophets, they were blessed with miracles and they used to perform miracles in front of their disciples and their followers and their people. But Hazrat Isa salam himself was a miracle. He was born, he was born to a virgin mother and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, blessed Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam as a virgin mother, a son without a father. Allah explained, explains and describes him and his mother as a miracle itself. In the chapter 21, verse 19, Allah says, and we made her her means whom? Hazrat Maryam Islam and her son, Hazrat Isa Islam, a sign for the worlds. So this is uh, moreover in uh, the chapter 2, verse 87, Allah says, and we gave Hazrat Isa Islam a clear miracle by his birth. So he was born without a father and this miraculous Pregnancy and birth itself was the first miracle of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And uh, if he had a father, he would have been addressed by the name of his father. But wherever and whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, he is always called Isa ibn Maryam, Isa the son of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. And Quran himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, that call people by the names of their fathers. So had Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, if he had a father, he would have been called by his name, but he is repeatedly in Quran, he is called by the name of his mother. So it clearly means that he was born without a father, he was born to a virgin mother. And this was the first miracle of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Then the second miracle which Quran mentions is his conversing and talking and addressing the people of his nation in his mother's lap. That is in his infancy, after his birth, he talked out to the people of Bani Israel. And when did this happen? When uh, Hazrat Maryam salam, she was obviously, she was very well known for as being a very pious lady. But when she walked back in her locality, carrying a baby along with her, although she was a virgin and she was not married. So the people started her blaming her of immorality. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already asked Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam to keep quiet and just point towards the baby. And Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, although it was very difficult because uh, all the people, they were blaming her and they were putting allegations on her family, on her parents, on her, on her siblings, and it was extremely difficult for her to keep quiet at that time, but it was as ordered by Allah. And remember that any person who obeys Allah, despite the fact that obedience does not seem the practical solution to the problem, and despite the fact that obedience seems extremely difficult and hard, but when a person obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite the hardship and despite the difficulty, and is patiently staying to the obedience, then what happens is 
Inna allaha ma'as sabirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes becomes the helper and the supporter of all those who are patient and obedient. And what Allah did, Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, she pointed to all the people who were blaming her. She pointed towards the baby in her lap and she pointed towards Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And then the miracle happened for her help. Inna allaha ma'as sabirin help. And the child, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, he spoke out in the mother's lap. So this was a miracle, and this was the second miracle of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And what did he speak in the chapter 3 of Quran, verse 46, Allah says that he shall speak to the people while still in the cradle and in the manhood, and he shall be from the righteous. And what did Hazrat Isa alayhi salam say to the people at that time? He said, I am indeed a slave of Allah. And he has given me the book and made me a prophet. And he has made me a blessed person wherever I may be. And he has enjoined upon me prayers and to pay alms as long as I live. And he has made me kind to my mother. And he has made me, he has not made me insolent and unblessed and may Peace be upon me the day I was born and the day I die and on the day I shall be raised to life. So this is from verse number 30 to 33 of chapter number nine, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly explained the miraculous conversation of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam in his mother's lap explaining his position and trying to take off all the allegations and purify the mother of all the sins they were blaming her for. The third miracle was, as is mentioned in Surah Maida, the fifth chapter of Quran, Allah says is what? Maida means a, a table laden with food. And uh, they had asked Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to ask his Allah, to bless them with a table laden with food. Because, you know, they had known that the people of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and the disciples of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, they were blessed with the heavenly foods of man and salva. And so they, they said and they assumed and believed that if Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was the true prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they could also be blessed with all this food, with the heavenly foods, and they asked for it. As Allah says, that when the disciples of Hazrat, Ibra, Hazrat uh, Isa alayhi salam said that is your Lord able to send down for us a table spread with food from heaven? He said, observe your duties to Allah if you are true believers. And they said, we desire to eat out of it and our hearts will be at rest and that we may know that you have spoken the truth to us and that we may be witnessing thereof. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam said, O oh Allah, our Lord, sent down for us a table laid down with food out of heaven. Because Hazrat Isa alayhi salam thought that the obstinate and stubborn people, if they see this miracle coming down from the heavens, then they might believe. A table laden down, laden with food out of heaven, that shall be for us a reoccurring festival, the first and the last of us miracle from you and provide us with your sustenance you are the best provider so this is in the chapter 5 surah maida verse number 112 to 114 where the allah mentions that the people asked for this laden table and uh, allah had blessed this table and allah mentions that uh, the table came down and they saw this miracle of Hazrat isa alayhi salam but still they ended up in uh, being disbelievers and transgressors. So the fourth blessing which he was blessed was the becoming of a bird. And this was a miracle also as Allah mentions in the chapter three, verse number 49, that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam said, ex explaining his miracles to his people, I create for you out of clay, the likeness of a bird. And then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird with Allah's permission. So these words that Hazrat Isa said that this was not because of my will 
or because of my expertise. And these miracles were because of the permission by the order and by the blessing of Allah. And this was a miracle that he used to create out of uh, mud. He used to create a bird and then he used to blow into it and it used to become a live bird. And this was the fourth miracle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed Hazrat Isa alayhi salam with. And the fifth and the sixth miracle was the healing power. The healing power was that he was blessed with the healing power, a healing of the congenital blind, the children who were blind by birth and the lepers. As Allah mentions in verse 49, uh, chapter three, as uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam said, I heal the blind and the lepers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him a miracle in the touch of his hands. And when he used to, he used to move his hand and he used to rub his hands on the eyes of congenitally blind children and even other blind, acquired blind people, the eyes used to acquire the vision again and the person used to get all right and he used to, the vision used to come back and the second miracle was that when he used to move and rub his hands over the skin of the the diseased skin of the lepers it was a highly contagious and infectious disease which was very very prevalent and the infection used to spread from one to the other but as of Isa alayhi salam he used to cure the lepers. In those periods when somebody got leprosy, because it was a highly infectious disease, they used to be casted out of the cities. And there were localities in where all these lepers were dumped and they were left there and they had a very miserable life. And they slowly and steadily, they died poor people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Hazrat Isa alayhi salam with this uh, medicinal miracle of uh, giving cure by rubbing his hand over the skin of the lepers. And the sixth miracle was the resurrection of the dead. As uh, mentioned in the chapter three, our verse 49, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam said, and I bring to life the dead. And this was how? By the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were people who used to die. Like we heard the story of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam when he asked them to uh, slaughter a cow and the cow's meat was used to strike the murdered person and the person was uh, got alive and sat up and they told the name of the murderer. But this miracle was a temporary miracle which occurred in the life of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam just once. But this miracle was given to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam and he used to blow or breathe or touch the dead and the person used to get up. So this was again a miracle. And the next miracle was, uh, giving them information or telling them about the provisions of today and tomorrow. As Allah mentioned in uh, the verse 49 of chapter 3, that he himself, as at Isa alayhi salam, addressing his people, talking and mentioning about his miracles in Surah Al Imran, he said, I inform you too of what things you eat and what you store up in your houses. Surely in that is a sign for you if you are believers. So all these miracles were given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam for the demonstration of his true prophethood. And uh, as he's clearly saying, surely in this is a sign for you if you are the believers. So these were the miracles which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means by when he says so bayinat refer to these miracles which were given by the order and by the uh, permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second thing which he was given was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying hey here wa ayyadna bi ruhil qudus ruhil qudus means has a jibrail alayhi salam and it means what? That he was supported with the pure spirit. The pure spirit here, or the Ruh al Qudus here, means refers to whom? Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam, because it was Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam who, by the order of Allah, blew the blew the spirit of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam in the womb of his mother. And that is how a virgin mother became a mother and she got pregnant and then she gave birth. And it was by the 
blowing of the pure spirit of Hazrat, um, Hazrat uh, Jibrail al -Islam, again by the order and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, after explaining these two clear blessings to the two prophets, the two prophets and their two followers, they are being given the two blessings each. Now, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, despite receiving these blessings, how did the people behave? What was their mannerism? Despite re getting such sources of guidance like Torah and the Injil and the Bayinab and a series of prophets, how did they behave? Allah says, what did they do? That every time a messenger came to you, what happened? Your souls did not like that. Their teachings and their messages, what the messengers and the books gave to you, your souls did not like it. And then you were arrogant. So the two reasons are being explained here. The one, the first reason in La Tahwa Anfusakumus. Anfusakum. They disliked, they disapproved, they rejected what the prophets had been revealed and they had been sent down. So they disliked, they disapproved, and they rejected and they displeased. So this is the first reason. And the second reason, which Allah explains here, astakbartum. You turned arrogant. You were arrogant. Regarding the commandments of Allah and the teachings of the prophets, which they were being given for the guidance as a blessing. They became arrogant. Now, arrogance was in which form? They took arrogance in the form that they started thinking and they developed the thought that their own system of life, their own code of ethics was now better than what was being taught to them by the chain of prophets. So this arrogance turned out to be a major reason for their disobedience. Remember, arrogance is a major underlying factor. It is a major cause and a triggering factor of disbelief, disobedience, and transgression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help, help us be humble in our life and help us, help us take out all forms of arrogance and even the smallest seed of arrogance from our hearts. So because of these two main reasons that they disliked and disapproved the teachings and, <coughs> and secondly, they were arrogant, they developed two behaviors. Now, last thing is they develop two behaviors. Number one, Allah says, Farikan Kazaptum, a group, a party, you denied, Kazaptum, you denied, you refuted. And the second group you did what? The Farikan Taktulun and another party you killed. So two evil behaviors of Bani Israel. They were what? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighted the evil behaviors and the sinful manner of people of Bani Israel, despite receiving the blessings which they had developed because of arrogance and dislike. Number one, refusal, denial, refusal, and rejection of all the teachings of the holy books, holy scriptures, and the prophets. And the second behavior is killing of the prophets and the messengers. This came one after the other. When the prophets taught them the messages and the commandments of Allah. They disliked the teachings initially and they simply refused. Initially they refused because they did not approve of them. They disapproved, they denied, they rejected. Initially they just simply refused. But when the prophets, they kept on teaching, they kept on preaching and they insistently kept on inviting, then they got fed up. They got fed up, they were irritated, and they finally, rather than simply refusing and denying, they started killing. And they attempted to kill the messengers of Allah, the reason being so that they would end up all the efforts of the prophets to change and alter their system of life. 
that they will no longer be, that they will kill the prophets, uh, the prophets, and they will no longer be there, and they would be no longer a person who would be inviting them, and they would be no longer a person who would be trying to attempt to alter their system of life. That is why they killed the prophets, as is mentioned also in other places. Without any rhyme or reason, they killed the prophets. For example, if uh, we learn the stories of Quran, we learn that the people of Bani Israel, they killed Hazrat Zakriya alayhi salam. Hazrat Zakriya alayhi salam, he was, he was uh, stoned to death. Astaghfirullah Rabbi. He was stoned to death by the people of Bani Israel on the allegation, a'uzu billah, of adultery with Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam because Hazrat Zakariya alayhi salam was the caretaker of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. And Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, when she became a virgin mother, they blamed Nauzubillah, the prophet of adultery, and then they stoned him to death. Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam, he was very aggressively opposing the immorality of the society. And he would talk very aggressively against the immoral activities which were going about in the society and the king himself was immoral and the uh, <clears throat> king himself was immoral and he was involved with a prostitute who would dance for him and this beloved lady of the king she herself was an adulteress and she was highly offended by the teachings of the prophet Hazrat Yahya and then it was the birthday of the king and she asked the king to present her with the head of Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam if he wanted her to dance for him on his special occasion. So on the request of this adulteress, the king ordered that Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam uh, was beheaded. And uh, then this woman was presented with his head laid on a tree. And uh, Hazrat Yirmi salam was a prophet of Bani Israel, and he was hung in a well till his death. So the Bani Israel killed the prophets, and this is mentioned in Quran more than once. Here I would want to mention that the people are the followers of the nations of the messengers killed the Nabi, and they could not, despite their attempts and desires, they could not kill the Rusul. So there is a difference we need to understand between a Nabi and between a Rusul. So who are the Nabi? The Nabi is one, as Allah mentions, who just came as a reviver. They were not given a new book. They were not given revelations of a divine scripture, and they were also not given a new Sharia. They just came as to refresh or to revive the messages and the teachings of the previous Rusul. And because they were not given with a new book, with the divine scripture, or with the new Sharia, they were just revivers and refreshers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not take responsibility of protection of their life. But on the contrary, all the rusul, they were given revelations of, a, of the next book or a divine scriptures. And they were given a new sharia. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised wallahu yasimuka min nas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took charge of protection of their life and honor. So the people surely attempted and they, they planned and desired the assassinations of all the Rusul, but they did not succeed in it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken the charge and responsibility of protecting all the Rusul. For example, uh, the king of the time, the Pharaoh, he gave a death verdict for Hazrat Musa salam, but he escaped. He escaped from Egypt and he got to Madian by the will and order of Allah and the help of Allah. Then Hazrat Ibrahim, 
he was, the people decided to throw him in fire, but by the order of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, by the order of Allah, the fire cooled down. Hazrat Isa, his people, they planned to crucify him, but by the order of Allah, he was raised with his body and soul and spirit to the heavens. And Prophet وسلم, he against him, there were 17 assassination attempts, but he came out unscathed because of the promise of Allah, Wallahu yaslu nas. So in the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly has explained two major reasons for the two major sins of the people of Bani Israel, despite their being blessed with two sources of divine guidance. Verse 88, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا رُلْفِ بَلَّعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَقَلِيلًا مَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And they said, our hearts are wrapped, but in fact, Allah has cursed them for their disbelief, so little is it that they believe. So when <coughs> the Bani Israel were invited towards belief and adopting obedience and give up their transgression, they used to give an excuse that they, their hearts were wrapped up so they could not receive or perceive or they could not relate to any new orders that Prophet ﷺ was teaching. But in response to their lame excuses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that uh, failure to have faith and belief is not because of the fact, the lame excuse that they are giving, that their hearts are wrapped, but the failure to have faith and belief is because of the curse of Allah. It is purely because of the curse of Allah. They had been cursed by Allah because of their obstinacy, because of their stubbornness, and because of their arrogance. And these we know that when these feelings and these mannerisms, when they exist in anybody's hearts, then these, they become the cause of the heart to be sealed, to be stamped. And these behaviors of obstinacy and stubbornness and arrogance are cursed behaviors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, help us surrender, help us surrender humbly to all the commandments of Quran and all the teachings and sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rabbana la tuzi' qulubana ba'da is hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen. Summa ameen.